Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. We take a content-based approach to help intermediate level English learners improve their English. Our current theme is animals. Now, if you want your English to get better, you're in the right place. Today, we're featuring the theme of cats. This is segment three of episode 35. In the previous segment, we took a little time to teach a very basic lesson in phonics. We'll build on that later in this episode. But first, let's see this video clip that tells us more about an organization that helps stray cats. The organization is the Committed Alliance to Strays, and office manager Sandy Fowler and board member Marsha Foster explain what their organization does to take strays off the street and get them ready for adoption. There are few things in this world more entertaining than kittens at play. These little performers have a hopeful future thanks to an organization called CATS, Committed Alliance to Strays. A stray is a cat who has no home. Sandra Fowler of CATS explains how stray kittens enter their system. Okay, so tell me some about the intake process. Um, the intake, uh, we, when we have somebody who has a, a cat they'd like to bring to us, they call us, they set up an appointment, they bring it in and just fill out some paperwork, and uh, we take the cat into our intake building where it will stay for 10 days, make sure it's healthy, get tested, get everything. Um, it's really important that people don't just dump the cats with us because we want to have as much information as we can about a cat. We realize that's not always a lot, but where they were found is always good because sometimes people call and say they've lost a cat and if we don't know where a cat is from, we don't know if this might be their cat. But um, we just, you know, we like to keep records. That's also very important of, of cats and where they're coming from and what's how they were found, anything that they know that's been done to them. And then what is the adoption process to go from, to kind of skip over all the right. things you do, <laughs> which we that's can okay. get back to, but what's the adoption process? Okay. Pro um, adoption process, when somebody wants to adopt a cat, they come in, an adoption counselor will take them around and meet the cats, and hopefully they'll find one that they click with and clicks with them, and in which case they, it's very easy, they fill out paperwork, they um, pay the adoption fee and they take their cat home. It's very, it's a very simple process. Tell me a little bit about that. I, I find this kind of intriguing, the mm -hmm. whole thing of being a foster parent to a oh. kitty. Oh. Yes. So yes. Could, could both of you say, make some comments <laughs> about, about that one? It's, it's wonderful. It's also, it's the job you love to hate <laughs> because sometimes giving them up is, is very hard but you know they're going to get a good home. We have a lot of, mostly what we have to come in to go to foster are gonna be kittens, but we do have some adult cats that have been through a lot and need a little extra love before they're going to be doing really well in here. So um, people who want to be fosters, they do the same thing, come in, fill out some foster forms, tell us if they want bottle feeder babies, babies that can eat on their own, a mama and babies, an older cat, what, what they're willing to take with them. And from there, when we get cats in that need to go into foster, we'll try to find the right foster family to match them up with. Um, we provide the, the food and the litter for them, everything they need, and always they can call us anytime if there's any problems. Bottle feeder babies are a lot of fun and a lot of work. Uh, it's like having a, a, like I said, having a a regular baby baby in your house. 20, you have to get up 24-7 every couple seven. hours. Yes, yes. Every couple of hours in the middle of the night to feed it just like you would a human baby. But, you know, there is so much fun to watch them grow up from this little tiny, tiny thing. Um, the youngest one I know of, we just got in several months ago. He was almost uh, bulldozed in a backyard and the mom had just just dropped him, just given birth to him, and she ran off, and she was not going to come back with a bulldozer in the yard. He still had his ambulance cord, the afterbirth, everything still attached to him. He was about an hour old, and I, I didn't give him much hope because that's, that's really young, but his name was Dozer, 
and he is <laughs> so still going strong. Our actually our executive director is fostering him, and um, I actually think she's going to be adopting him because <laughs> her daughter fell in love with him. But he's going strong, and it's been so fun to watch him grow up. Now I understand there's uh, volunteers that that help you. Uh, how important are they to uh, succeeding? Extremely. We, we wouldn't be here without our volunteers. We have um, six paid employees and the rest are volunteers. So the volunteers answer the phones for us. They, um, they help take cats to the vets for us. They are the ones that are the um, adoption counselors. They do the laundry. They clean up any messes that might be made during the day, we, we absolutely could not do this without the volunteers. There's there's no way. We we never get anything done no. in, in the office. I wouldn't, none of the bills would get paid because I wouldn't have time to do it. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. People walking in and they want, you know, someone to go with them around, um, an option individual, mm -hmm. like the front desk, whom we usually have certain, there are specific people that come on certain days. And without them, I just don't even know how anybody no. can manage because they're handling the phones, they're handing the door, each person, individual, that comes in and out. We're featuring an organization called Committed Alliance to Strays. I asked them how they handle the funding for all these activities. All of our funding, 100% is donations from the community. So we live strictly on the donations from the community and nothing else. And so no, we don't have any government funding or anything like that. We're hoping to get some grants here yes. in the, the near future. Um, unfortunately, in the past couple of years, we haven't had anybody who knew how to write grants for us. So we have had several people step forward just recently who know how to write grants. So fingers crossed, we'll be getting some and that might relieve some financial stress. So. so when you consider all of the, the participation in the fundraising as mm -hmm. well as the people willing to foster cats mm -hmm. and people yes. willing to adopt cats, mm -hmm. what does this tell you about the attitude of our community about cats? It's, uh, there's more cat lovers than cat haters. Um, we did, uh, was it two, three years ago? Three years. We, um, we almost had to close our doors. We had nothing in our, in our bank. It was And we put, we put out a plea, and it was incredible what happened. In two weeks, we made $150,000. The community stepped up. They came out. They donated money. They donated food. They donated everything that they could to keep us going. We got... Um, we had a, the the interview got on to online and it went on to Jackson Galaxies. If you know him, he does the Cat from Hell on TV. Got onto his oh. website, and um, people know him around the world. We got donations not only from across the country, but we got donations from England, Australia, everything. So there are cat lovers everywhere. At that time, when everything was so bad. We also, the news channels were fantastic. Um, we went to one of our little local reporters whom she immediately got someone over here. Yeah. They did a big interview, so it got in the Mail Tribune. It was just, everybody really stepped up and it was wonderful. So, now the organization still carries out its mission, yet it's always in need of support from the community. You can learn more about Committed Alliance to Strays at their website, catsandkittens.org. We'll have more on cats on another video clip for Ramping Up Your English. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. I'm your host, John Letts, and you're watching episode 35. Earlier in today's episode, we found a list of words that rhyme with the word cat. We learned a tiny bit of English phonics about the short A sound. Now we can expand that knowledge to longer words. If you can recognize the small words we listed earlier, they can help you pronounce longer words. Bat 
in the word battery, cat in the word category. Dat is not really a word, but you can see the pattern in the word data. See the word mat in material and the word pat in pattern, sat in the word Saturn, and tat in the word tattoo. So not only are cats just too cute, they're the key to one of the 44 sounds in the English language. We're reviewing this small bite of phonics to help you when you need to read. Reading is an important step in elevating your level of English proficiency. When you read about our theme, you'll find that your listening comprehension skills go up when you watch the video clips that are featured in the program. So your homework today is to visit your local library and check out a book about cats. Now, if you understand very little of what you've seen in today's show, I suggest getting a book from the children's section. Now, don't be embarrassed about that. It's a great way to learn more about your target language. I use them often when learning to speak Spanish. Now, see if your book has any words rhyming with cat. If your library has books about cats in your home language, by all means, check them out. You'll learn more about our theme, and reading them will activate some of your prior knowledge. Both are smart things to do in learning English through our theme of animals. We'll be right back after this. What's a horse doing on ramping up your English? We're galloping toward a new unit, animals. So we're in the country meeting some horses. Horses are just one of the many animals that will help viewers ramp up their English. So funny. Our Mr. Cowboy, you loving that? Horses, boy, I'm, I'm getting the flies. You see, horses have to deal with flies. Coming soon to RVTV Voices, a new unit on ramping up your English, an educational support program for intermediate level English learners from all language backgrounds. So how can horses help you improve your English? Watch Ramping Up Your English to find out on channels 15 and 115 in Ashland and channel 182 on Charter Cable in Southern Oregon. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. And you know, watching this program is a smart move you can watch all episodes of Ramping Up Your English by visiting my website, letscreate.org. There you'll find a link to starfall.com for learning English phonics, as well as the materials we used in today's episode and the homework assignment. Now, you can also watch and even download today's episode and others by visiting archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Choose Ramping Up Your English from the sidebar at the right or choose my name, John Letts. This is episode 35. This program runs on the channels 15 and 115 on the Ashland Home Network and on channel 182 on Charter Cable in Southern Oregon. See us on the RVTV programming schedule at RVTV Voices. That's rvtv.sou.edu. Channels and showtimes may vary in other areas. Well, that's all the time we have for ramping up your English. I want to thank my loyal, my loyal crew RVTV staff, and I want to thank you for watching. See you next time on Ramping Up Your English. I'm John Letts. You've been watching Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English language learners. Learn more. Visit our website at letscreate.org. You can also watch or download today's program at archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Join us next time on RBTV Voices for Ramping Up Your English.